I'm going to talk about using completing the square when we've got a quadratic um, graph and we want to and how we can use it to help us sketch the quadratic graph. So if we look at this first one here, we've got x squared plus 6x. So if we wanted to sketch it, we would need to put it into this format. And um, the reason for that is because we do know the basic quadratic or the basic x squared graph. We know that that looks like this. So this is the graph of y equals x squared. And if we were to put it into this format, so if we were to have x plus a uh, all squared plus b, then it would be a transformation of this graph. So if we were now trying to draw the graph of y equals x plus a all squared plus b, then what this would be would actually be a transformation by the vector minus a in the x direction and b in the y direction. So, for example, if we did a question and we found out that the, graph, the quadratic function or graph could be written in this form, so let's just imagine we've got this x minus 2 all squared plus 3. Then what we'd know is we would have a translation vector, which would be minus whatever I was adding on to the x there. So in this case, minus minus 2 would give us 2 for the translation vector as the x part of it. And then b is the bit that's added on after the square bracket. So the translation vector would be 2, 3. So we could take our original quadratic, this x squared, the basic one, and translate it by moving it 2 in the x direction. So positive 2 because that was a negative inside the bracket there. And by moving it by 3 positively in the y direction, which would move it up. So this would mean that the minimum point now was centred, had moved from 0, 0 for this one, for y equals x squared, to the point 2, comma 3. So this one would look like that. So when we, when we write it in um, completed square form, it makes it very easy to do a quick sketch because we can find the minimum point of the graph. So I'm going to look at these two examples to begin with. So if we've got y equals x squared plus 6x, then we can actually use a formula for finding what a and b are. And um, in general, if I have a graph which is or a function of x rather, which is x squared plus bx plus c, then I can write it in completed square form as x plus whatever the b is over 2, all squared, but then it's minus b over 2 squared plus c. So that's a really handy formula to remember for this. So applying it to this one here, what we've got is b is the is the coefficient of the x value so b is 6 so this would go into this would become the x plus this b value of 6 divided by 2 which gives us 3 all squared then minus the b is 6 again divided by 2 gives us 3 squared and then plus c. Now c in this case is actually zero. So with nothing to add on there. But if there was um, a value, then we'd have to actually add that on. So if we, if we tidy this up a bit, we've got y is equal to x plus 3 all squared and then it's minus 9. So that means 
that our translation vector, when we translate the y equals x squared graph, our translation vector is the minus whatever I'm adding on into the bracket. So it's minus 3. And then whatever this value is, which is minus 9. So that means to sketch this one, all we need to do is we need to just mark on this coordinate, which would be the minimum. So it would be minus 3, minus 9. And that will give us that point. And then we could, could sketch it like that. And we might also want to find this value here. I don't, I don't yet know whether it's uh, above the horizontal axis or below it. But all I would need to do is substitute in the value of x into the graph of 0. So in fact, um, what I would know is it goes through 0. So I might want to just uh, revise that a little. So in fact, what, what it would look like would be here's our here's our axes and we know the minimum point of the graph is minus three minus nine and because if we substitute in x equals zero into that x equals zero would give us y equals zero as well so that means it goes through this point so there we go so that's a, a rough sketch of this graph by finding the minimum point here we could also find this point as well if we want to work across the horizontal axis that would be by creating an equation putting y equals zero now to find this point y equals zero so if we make that equal to our x plus six x then we get factorizing the left hand side there oh sorry the right hand side with the x bit we get x x plus six equals zero so first solution x equals 0 was this point and x equals minus 6 from the graph from the bracket there gives us this point here so this is x is minus 6 so that was example a i'm going to now look at the second one so again we're going to put it into completing the square form so we can see that uh, here the a would be the value that would be in front of the x squared, but we're looking at ones where it's actually a 1x squared at the moment. So we're interested in what b is. b is minus 8 and c is 7. So what we can do, we can say, right, if this is a function of x, so f of x, I could use y if I wanted to say this, but f of x then in complete the square form would be x and then plus half of whatever b is, and since b is minus 8 for half that, I've got minus 4, all squared, and then I'm going to take away from that again half of b squared so that's going to be minus 8 over 2 squared and it's going to be plus c which is the 7. Um, I'm going to tidy that up a bit so I've got x minus 4 all squared and then if I square this negative 4 as it would work out inside the brackets actually works out to be positive the bracket part so it'd be plus 16, but then I've got the minus there in the first place. So that's going to be minus 16 plus 7. And what we would then do, we would just tidy up that last bit. So we've got x minus 4 
all squared, and that's going to be minus 9. So that tells me I'm going to have a translation of take the negative of what's ever inside there. So negative of minus 4 is plus 4, minus 9. So that's the translation that we're going to do on the original x squared graph here. So that's going to give me my minimum value. So it's going to mean the minimum value here is going to be at 4 and minus 9. So that means very roughly the graph, oops, I'm trying to put that through the minimum point there. Very roughly the graph is going to look like that. And then we may want to find these points as well. Uh, we could do that by factorizing this graph now. So I'll go on to do that now. So we've already shown that x minus uh, f of x can be written in completed square form as x minus 4 all squared minus 9. And so, as I said previously, that would mean we would translate uh, y equals x squared by the opposite sign of this one for the x. So that would be 4 and minus 9. So if we wanted that on a graph, And we've got something like this, 4 minus 9. So there's the minimum point translated from 0, 0, which would be the minimum point of y equals x squared. So the graph would look roughly like this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find, when we're doing sketches of graphs, it's important to find the points where they cross the axes. So these three points would also be ones we'd probably be asked to find. So finding this point where it crosses the, the y-axis, what we do is we'd say, well, um, crosses y-axis at x equals 0. So we all we do. We'd say, well, in that case, we could go back to the original equation if we wanted. Um, we could say, well, at that point, y is going to be equal to 0 squared minus 8 times 0 plus 7. So that's just going to give me 7. So, in fact, I might want to just... Uh, redraw this graph a little. Um, so now we've found that it's crossing in the positive. I'm just going to rub this out um, because we know in fact that it crosses at plus 7. So it's going to cross up here. So we've got our graph is going to actually look more like that, crossing the, the y-axis at, at positive 7. Um, if I now want to find the, these two points here, which is the roots of the equation, so where, where it crosses the horizontal axis, so crosses the x-axis or horizontal axis at y equals 0 this time. Obviously, y is zero all along the horizontal axis. So, if we now um, equate zero to x squared minus 8x plus 7, so we can say x squared minus 8x plus 7 is equal to zero. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and put this into two brackets. So I'm going to factorize it. So if we try and put this into two brackets, we're going to have x and x, and uh, two numbers which multiply to make 
positive seven and add to make negative eight. So we're going to have minus one and we're going to have minus seven equals zero. So that tells me that the roots of this equation, another way of saying where it crosses the x-axis, are going to be uh, x is equal to one and x is equal to seven. So there we go, one and seven are those two coordinates.